Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of John Langalibale Ledube John Langalibale Ledube was many things to South Africans while he lived. He was an essayist, educator, philosopher, politician, poet, publisher, and novelist. He was the first president of the South African Native National Congress SANNC, which later became the African National Congress in 1923. John Langalibalele was born on the 11th of February 1871 in Natal at the Inanda Mission Station of the American Zulu Mission AZM. His father, Rev. James Dubey, was one of the earliest Africans ordained as pastors by the AZM. Dubey started his formal education in Inanda and Adams College. While he was at school, he got into some trouble with other boys and the school's reverend good enough approached his colleague, William Wilcox, to come talk with the boys. That began a relationship between Dubé and Reverend Wilcox. In 1887, Dubé pleaded with Wilcox, who planned to return to the US, to take him along so he could further his education there. Wilcox agreed conditionally that Dubé would have to be responsible for himself financially. When Dubé arrived in the US, he attended Oberlin Academy Preparatory School. He got to work doing outdoor laboring jobs to earn money. Not satisfied with the odd jobs, Wilcox introduced him to Mrs. Frank H. Foster, who helped him find a more suitable work. From 1888 to 1890, Dubé studied the sciences, mathematics, classic Greek works, and took a course in oratorical skills. Although Dubé did not graduate from Oberlin College, the skills, connections, and all he learned laid the foundations for his later accomplishments. While in the US, Dubé accompanied Wilcox on his lecture tours and was given an opportunity to lecture as well. He lectured from 1890 to 1892, giving talks throughout New York, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Dubé was able to raise some money which was later used to start a school in South Africa. During this time, he published a book called A Familiar Talk Upon My Native Land and Some Things Found There. His writing skills and literature would prove very useful later as he led the indigenous people to battle for their rights. Dubé was forced to return to South Africa in 1892 because of an illness. A year after his return, Wilcox also returned to work at a mission station at Groutville. On his return, Dubé got a job in his former high school in Amanzimtoti as a teacher. There, he met Nokutela Mdima, who later became his wife. In 1894, Dubé was encouraged by Wilcox and Nokutela to start up his own mission. He went on to start a day school where he taught mathematics and English. He also built two churches between 1894 and 1896. His school was different from the other missionary schools in that the students were encouraged to read in their native language and to focus on the practical aspects of the curriculum. In August 1900, he also founded the Zulu Christian Industrial Institute, which was renamed the Olange Institute in 1901. This was the first educational institution in South Africa to be founded by black Africans. He received several invitations to lecture and was consequently awarded a doctorate of philosophy. Dubé also along with other like-minded established the Natal Native Congress NNC in July 1900. This marked the beginning of his commitment to political action. He hoped that the NNC would help Africans express their aspirations and grievances to the white colonial government. He had picked up writing and editing skills during his sojourn in the US where he worked for a local printing firm at a time. Together with his wife Nokutela, he established the first indigenous Zulu newspaper, Ilanga Lasse Natal. This was in 1903. The newspaper became a mouthpiece for the African population. 
It is interesting to note that the paper is still in existence and its 100th anniversary was celebrated in 2003. Dube wrote a number of literary works including the historical novella Shaka's Body Servant. He also wrote the biographies of Zulu rulers including King Dinizulu, making him the first African biographer. In 1912, several educated blacks met in Bloemfontein and established the South African Native National Congress SANNC, and Dube became the first president of the party. The SANNC was renamed African National Congress ANC in 1923 and it became the major platform for the fight for the liberation of black and colored South Africans. Dube unfortunately could not replicate his organizational success in his marriage. They could not properly handle their childbearing challenge as Dube went on to father a child with one of his pupils, leaving Nokutela humiliated. Dube and his wife separated in 1914 and Nokutela left Natal for Transvaal. However, she developed kidney disease and came back to live with Dube. She died in 1917 at only 44. Dube was very successful in his endeavors in contributing to the political and socio-economic development of blacks in South Africa. He championed the fight against the injustice against black people. He breathed his last and died on the 11th of February 1946. It would take over four decades after his death before his dreams for South Africa were fully actualized. What have we missed out of this biography of Langali Balele? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.